turn. Oh, there's gotta be something I can do. I'm running out of ideas. There's gotta be something in here. Really? Oh. I have an idea. Intern, are you in here? Mm -hmm. ah, don't, 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 don't do anything to me, please. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not gonna do anything. I just... Look, dude, I need your help. I can't do this anymore. I'm running out of money. And why should I try to help you? You tried to brainwash me and you did that silly shenanigan with the mind control glasses. What the heck's the matter with you? I know I tried to do that, okay? I, I apologize. I've, uh, at this point... I really need your help, dude. There's a reason that I had you there in the first place, and it's because I can't do this anymore. I've been making blasters all by myself for years, and they all suck. Every one of them sucks. Well, as much as I love to say this, that's not my problem anymore, sir. You had your chance with me, and you screwed me over right out of the gate. So I came back here in a heartbeat. You're not gonna pull that one on me again, I swear. You, you're not gonna do that again. I am genius. I have 9,000 IQ. I don't know if you've changed at all. I don't trust you at all. I don't trust you as far as I can throw your hat. Where is your hat? Never mind. I don't know if I've changed at all, but can you please just help me this one last time? I promise you help me one more time, and I will never bug you again as long as you live. All right, fine. I guess one more time helping you out won't hurt anybody, but no more. So what do you need? So I have this blaster here, the Omnia, and the Thunderbolt. Do you remember these two? Well, yeah, I designed those two myself when I worked for you. What about them? Yeah, exactly. Um, I need you to, uh, you know the sacred ceremony? You're not gonna pull a supervisor and make me do the double punch thing again, are you? Ugh. Um, I, I, I was, I was hoping that you could do that. I don't know how to do it! I don't know how you guys did it the last time with the double punch. I need to know how it was done. I need to know! Okay, look, I will perform the sacred ceremony again, but you don't get to see what happens, because I don't want you figuring out all of our secrets to how we make our best blasters. I will help you out this one time, though, just because you're being nice. Let me see. Them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Whatever you did, just here, do it again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Here, just take it, okay? Just take it, please. Howdy, and welcome to day five of the Dart Zone Reviewathon, the final frontier in this goofy challenge that I put myself through for whatever reason. And for the final boss of this challenge, we're covering one of the most highly anticipated blasters this year, besides what the hell is Nerf End series at the beginning of 2024, and that is the Dart Zone Maxim Pro. This is a 2024 release out of Dart Zone in the Adventure Force Pro series, which makes it a Walmart exclusive that shoots 150 odd, and this one was very, very highly anticipated because it's a flywheel blaster and it is a direct competitor to the Strifex. This is literally Dart Zone's belated answer to the Strifex. So one of two things could happen here. Either A, this proves to be a really good competitor to the Strifex and a pretty nice alternative for people who don't want to spend $120 on it on Amazon, or B, this turns out to be a complete flop and a total waste of time, especially if you already have a Strifex. So what's it gonna be? Let's find out. First, let's start off with the design, and before we get to design, I'm quickly going to remove the detachable stock as well as the magazine. I'll get to this in a moment because that's pretty cool. And we're going to take a look at design just as this right here. Oh yeah, let's also take the iron sights off of it too. That's, that's a little bit unfair as well. Alrighty, now we got a design to talk about. This blaster, I did not like when I first saw pictures of it. I didn't like the way this thing looked at all. I thought that this blaster was just weird, painted clear with this awkward, like, orange, translucent paint, the big purple decal 
decal that was seen on the Nexus Pro X and Aeon Pro X. I didn't really think it worked that well on either of those blasters, and I especially didn't think it worked well here. I didn't know what was going on with all these extra lines and just what is what is this here? What is this? What is this right here? That's just what the heck? But now that I have this thing in person, holy crap. I love this design a lot. Let's address the shape first and then the coloration as to why it works. First of all, the shape here is the exact same size as a Nerf Strife. It is no bigger or smaller than a Nerf Strife, but without as much stuff sticking out off to the left side. Everything is kind of balanced right in the middle. You got the motors here, you got the batteries here, like what a Raven had. So that works very well. But the actual styling is similar to a Thunderbolt. The blaster is very similarly shaped to a Thunderbolt, especially this front end right here. This whole chunk of plastic right up here really closely resembles the Thunderbolt but a kind of more refined and boxy version of the Thunderbolt that has fully like understood what its identity is and back here I think that this whole area is very similar to like what you would see on a strike except for this we will address this in a moment, but like the grip shaping up here, this sort of big, gigantic, like good looking, like, like look at the way that this trigger guard is set up, the way that it integrates into the grip. That is freaking cool. You've got this piece right here, which kind of turns the rail attachment into a sling mount that also turns it into a guide for the stock attachment point. Everything here just seems to make perfect sense shape-wise. And I love the way the front muzzle looks with these two like big black stripes that make it look like some sort of quantum generator. And all these little lines that just blend perfectly together. It looks absolutely amazing. A quick look at the stock this blaster comes with because there is actually something to address with this stock. Yes, it is the same style buffer tube thing that Dart Zone has been including with most of their blasters, but the way that this stock uses the buffer tube is different. It has this paddle looking lever that is seen on both sides to actuate the buffer tube thing, rather than it being a push button closer to the back, which actually makes this not only more responsive and easier to use, but a lot more stable. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't collapse this thing no matter how hard I push. This is a really well-designed stock. I like this thing. I want to put this on everything, man. And once you put the stock on, yeah, that just looks really cool. Even though the stock doesn't really line up with any of the lines this blaster has. So it kind of looks like an oversight. It doesn't seem like they really designed the blaster with this particular stock in mind, which is hilarious because the stock is included with the blaster and I doubt it's going to be included with anything else because Dart Zone's never included the same stock with multiple blasters in a row. They always include some other variation of that stock. So... I don't know what's going on here. I do think it looks pretty cool, but I just don't understand why it doesn't perfectly line up because they had every opportunity to do that. Let's talk about the ergonomics. For the sake of your guys' sanity, I'm going to de-safety this blaster and just pray that this works out well. This blaster features a main grip, kind of a foregrip, and of course the stock and the cheek rest. And since the stock is included with this blaster, I will be treating the stock as if it was a built-in stock. The main grip here is really comfortable. Like really, really comfortable. It feels really good. I absolutely love the way that this grip feels. It's got a nice finger choil for your middle finger. And then down here, it's got these comfortable ridges that just add a little bit of extra texturing. The dovetail right here is a little tiny bit low, but it does actually line up with the middle of the trigger where the divot is. So it's not that big of a deal whatsoever. The biggest problem is this gigantic orange button on the back. If you haven't guessed by now, That's the rev trigger. Using the stock is a pretty good length and it braces really nicely against your shoulder. Same with the cheek rest and putting your hand up here on the front of the blaster is pretty comfortable. Even though there's no specific like foregrip, I just end up putting my hand here every time because the way that the shell is shaped, it kind of acts like a foregrip and it feels like a really comfortable foregrip. It doesn't look right having my thumb so close to the barrel like this, but I don't really care. It works just fine, I'm gonna use it. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a semi-automatic magazine-fed flywheel blaster. So you take your magazine, which by the way, I love the way that this magazine looks. Not very many people like the banana mag style, but I think it looks really cool. You put the mag in like this, you rev the blaster, and then it's semi-auto. 
Let's talk about the triggers and the smoothness of operation, starting with the mag release here. I think it's a little bit too far forwards. I think that the mag release should either be placed a little bit further back or have an additional paddle that is like connected to it, at least like something like this, because I mean, it pushes back far enough to where you could warrant something like that, but it's not that big of a deal. If you break your grip a little bit, you can hit it just enough with your middle finger to be able to pull it out. But still, I don't really like doing that. I would prefer to just have something to do that and having to do this is a little bit annoying. Though the mag release is pretty responsive. Putting the mag in and taking the mag out is very smooth. It is a flared mag well, which makes it very easy to put the mag in and taking the mag out is pretty crispy. It does have a pretty satisfying click when it hits the forward position and it is very very sturdy despite how easy it is to actually take the mag out. The main trigger there isn't that much to write home about until you put darts in it. And it is just like the snappiest trigger. It pops so satisfyingly when you pull it in. I really love the main trigger on this blaster. I've been avoiding this for far too long. It's time to talk about the rev trigger. And to do that, we've got to get the Venom Pro because this blaster has a very similar rev trigger. As you can see right here, this little gray dovetail thing is the rev trigger. You push it in with the back of your hand like this and the blaster would be revving right now. This works for two reasons. First of all, this is a small, compact, light, kind of sidearm sized blaster, which means it is very easy to maneuver without even thinking about it. Meanwhile, the Maxim Pro is substantially heavier and larger, being a more primary sized blaster. But two, the more important thing is the way that this rev trigger is actually placed. It is placed up close to the top and occupying the top half where the webbing of your hand goes, which means the palm of your hand never makes contact with it. It's only right here that ever makes any form of contact with the rev trigger. So it is a conscious decision to move your thumb forwards to put pressure on the rev trigger and as such rev the blaster. The Maxim Pro, on the other hand, uses a very different style of rev trigger. Even though it is mounted in a similar way, the way that it is mounted is different enough to make a really big difference. So the, the Venom Pros was up here, the Maxim Pros is all the way down here. It occupies the bottom half of the back of the grip and is a large orange button that protrudes very significantly rather than being hidden away in the shell like the Venom Pros was, which means your entire palm makes contact with the rev trigger and as such, your your entire hand can be responsible for pressing it down. What does this mean? Simply put, any slight variation in the way that you hold this blaster, if you are not making a conscious effort to keep your hand off of the rev trigger, that happens. It happens a lot, a whole lot more than with the Venom Pro. And I was vindicated by this when I first got the blaster. I was legitimately disappointed in this thing for quite a while when I first got the Maxim Pro because I figured that this was just gonna be unbearable. It was always going to be revving no matter what I tried to do and it was just gonna suck. And here I have an update. Yeah, it still sucks, but it is something that you can get used to and you can manage to deal with this rev trigger if you put up with it for long enough. And by long enough, I mean playing around with this blaster for a couple days and training your hand to squeeze the sides of the grip using your fingers rather than applying pressure to the back and the front of the grip like every other blaster in the entire universe. That is inexcusable. I don't care how nice and responsive the rev trigger is being able to push it in and it being satisfyingly clicky. The fact that you have to train yourself to hold the grip differently than every other blaster ever just because of this rev trigger design being different enough to the point where you will constantly rev it all the time and you have to figure out what you're doing inexcusable. There is literally no excuse that can be made for this thing. The Venom Pro, even that blaster, had a reason for having the rev trigger like that, as the magwell occupies any spot that a rev trigger would be able to occupy. So the rev trigger was mounted up here facing down like this, and so when you push the dovetail in, it pushes up against the trigger. This one, there is nothing in the grip, and it was literally just mounted from the back for the sake of being mounted from the back. And the worst part about this is that there's really no way to change it because if you look inside the grip you can see the mechanical setup of this rev trigger the entire grip is based around it which means in order to change the rev trigger out you would completely have to saw the grip off and replace it with another one 
And no, hollowing out the inside of this grip wouldn't really work either because of the fact that it's made with translucent plastic, so it would be very, very noticeable if you did any form of modification to the inside of the grip. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. If you like this, then you like this. If you don't, then you don't. And it's not something that I can really give my opinion on any further at this point. What is this hole? I'm sure everybody wants to know. It's the jam door. You can stick your finger through this hole and reach up close to the flywheels to clear out jams from the back without having to have a big jam door up here. Plus, it also gives you an extra window to see darts when you're loading through your magazine, which I think is honestly a pretty cool multi-use detail. I hope this comes back on a lot of blasters. I don't know about the rev trigger coming back, but I definitely hope that this thing comes back. Anyway, let's see this thing fire. potential does the Maxim Pro have? <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting for this section of the video because this blaster, this freaking blaster right here is the only blaster I have ever seen, the first one I've ever seen in my life that is specifically designed to be modified. And when I say it is designed to be modified, I mean that not only did Dart Zone design several quality of life details that are going to make modders' jobs way easier into this blaster, but that they literally told people to mod these blasters. They told people to mod the blaster. Let me give a quick description on the two big peripherals that this blaster features. First of all, you remember when the Dart Zone Pro Mark III came out and the battery tray could come out and an XT60 was hidden under there? This one features an XT30 connecting the battery tray in, which isn't as good as an XT60, but it's still better than having nothing. But more importantly, the pusher that this blaster features, you know, the thing that pushes the darts forward, has a gear rack mounted on top of it. And up here inside this space right behind there is an open spot that is the exact right size to fit a worker full auto kit in it. And I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Dart Zone literally told people to go and buy worker full auto kits and shove them into these blasters. How much more obvious can you get? This blaster is so unbelievable unbelievably close to being an absolute home run hit. But there are two annoying problems that it has. The first one being the rev sugar. I mean, I've explained this already. The second one, the Omnio returns because these motors burn out. When you put a 3S in here, people's motors have been burning out like it's nobody's business. We were close. I mean, we were really, really close. After the Venom Pro not having any issues with burnout, I seriously thought that this one would be another home run hit like that one was, but no, we've got motors burning out. Though at the same time, this blaster's literally designed to be modified. You could just put new motors in it, but I mean, still, the motors should work out of the box! Well, they do work out of the box, just not when you put a 3S in there, so I don't know what to tell you guys. So overall, what do I think of the Darzone Maxim Pro, and do I think that this is a worthy competitor to the Strife X, or even a Strife X killer, as a lot of people want to call it right now? Well, when it comes to being a competitor to the Strife X, 
I actually think this blaster comes really, really close. There are a lot of things that I really like about it. Not only the quality of life details that were built in, like the pusher and the removable battery tray, but also just the appearance, the function, the ergonomic setup, the magwell that is like way smoother for Talon mags than the Strife X's obnoxiously tight magwell. The fact that not only does it come with a stock, but it is a very comfortable buffer tube stock. The little sights that it comes with, it uses Picatinny rail. Like there's a lot that this blaster does that is really cool that the Strife X doesn't have. As well as this blaster being $40 rather than $120 and being readily available at Walmart to just drive down and buy right now. It's a lot easier to buy this blaster than it is to buy the Strife X. But I do still think that the Strife X is a better semi-auto mag-fed flywheeler. It uses a more familiar geometry with the internals. It is a Strife, so it's more universally accepted when it comes to the ergonomic setup of it. It comes with a 3S LiPo, and it features a traditional rev trigger. Do you guys want this rev trigger? Do you want it? Because let me tell y'all, Dart Zone has made it explicitly clear that this rev trigger is experimental. They're trying it this year, and if it pans out well, they will be including this rev trigger on future blasters. But if it does not pan out well, they will retcon this rev trigger right as fast as it came in. So if you guys like this style of rev trigger being pushed from the back of the hand rather than with your middle finger, now's the time to say something. But if you don't, now's the time to say something because they're listening and they're taking notes. But all in all, I'm actually pretty happy with the Maxim Pro. If you want to buy this blaster, I'll link it in the description below. With all that said, thank you guys for watching and thanks for tuning in to the Dark Zone Review-a-thon. It's finally over. And now I'm going to go take a nap. Thank you for watching. Bye.